the law of sines, right? You guys, we talked about that on in the previous lesson. The law of sines, um, you can use, you know, the sine of A divided by A is equal to the sine of B divided by B is equal to the sine of C divided by C. And that's great. And use that one if you're trying to find an angle, or you can flip these um, if you're trying to find a side. And you have the right information, right? So, I mean, you got it. You really have to learn how to label the triangles because the side opposite, uh, the angle it should match up in letter. And, and so when, when you think about like drawing a triangle, you have to be able to accurately label angles and sides. If you don't do this, you're really never going to be able to do these problems. So you have to be able to accurately label these because they match up with each other. They match up across with each other. And so it's an important piece. Now, sometimes you don't have the right information to, to use the law of signs. So what did, what did mathematicians come up with? They came up with an alternative called the law of cosines. And it's really based off of the Pythagorean theorem. So um, I'm going to show you, you know, really what it is and then and then show you two alternate things that you can do to figure out what you're missing. So um, and these are interchangeable. So um, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2 times a times b times the, the cosine, sorry, not the sine, the cosine of c. Now, it's important to kind of note what this looks like. It actually looks like the Pythagorean theorem because it actually is the Pythagorean theorem and then just that extra piece off of there. So you can interchange these letters, and I'm not going to go through and write the interchange of things where, you, where it's a squared, equals c squared plus b squared and, and so on. I can change these letters around, except you just got to note where each letter is. Now, I can kind of adjust this to find a side. If I were going to find the side c, what I could do is c is equal to the square root of all of this stuff, a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of c. That would be to find the side, c. If I need to find angle c, I want you to think about what we have. I'm going to, because I'm going to do a bunch of different work here. So to find angle c, I'm going to solve for C. So big C is equal to. If I were going to solve that, I would have, actually, I'll do it this way, just so you see the way it is. To find angle C, what I would have done is I would have taken C squared, and I would have subtracted A squared, and I would have subtracted B squared. Now notice this is multiplication up there. So then what I would have done is I would have divided by negative 2 times a times b. But then I would have needed to get the cosine out of there, so I would have used the inverse. So that's all the algebra steps taken care of for you. Now you have to kind of think about, well, what do these triangles look like? What would, a, what would a problem like this look like if I were going to use the law of cosines? And so let me show you a problem um, and see if I can find one where there's a, I'm trying to find a side and another one where I'm trying to find an angle. And so I can show you both methods of this as best I can. So this one's find W. So find W. Um, which is a side length, right? So 
uh, to the nearest centimeter. So we're going to find w to the nearest centimeter. Now, I, again, I got to be able to, to, to draw the, the diagram, right? I mean, if I can't draw this diagram appropriately, I am going to never get this problem right. So I got v, w, x. It doesn't matter how I, how I position those. As long as once I do position those angles, that side x is there, side w is here, and side v is here. And so if you position those in the right way, you're going to be able to answer these questions. So it says side x is 41. It says side v is 17. And it says w is equal to 134. If you try to set up the law of sines on this, it won't work. You won't have enough information. You can't find another angle, and you really need another angle because, remember, we're trying to find this side. That's what the question asked. And we can't do anything other than use the law of cosines. But what we can do is we can use the law of cosines with this idea of finding a side. Instead of finding side C, we're going to find side W. So here's what I have. W is equal to the square root of 41 squared plus 17 squared minus 2 times 41 times 17 times the cosine of 134. And that's in degrees. And I can do that all on my calculator. I can go to Desmos and I can get my calculator. I got to make sure though, when you open Desmos, it's going to default it to radians. So you're going to have to go down here, switch it to degrees. That's an important piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in exactly what it says. I can get all my keyboard stuff down here so I can get my big square root right here. And then I can do 41 squared plus 17 squared minus 2 times 41 times 17 times. Now I need to do the cosine. I can either type it in or I can grab it this way. And I can do 134. And it does the calculation all right there for me. It tells me W is equal to 55.52. Seven. So then I just need to answer it according to what Delta Math is asking me to find. Okay, now let me see if I can find one where I have to find. I'm going to flip through until I can see if I can find one where they ask me to find the angle. And I haven't found one, so I, you know, I'm going to flip through a couple more, see if they're ask, ever ask me to find an angle. And I don't know that they do on this. And, and that's unfortunate because, uh, but if you ever needed to find an angle, you, you know how to do it. I'm, I've, I've kind of exhausted a bunch of problems, but you're going to do all the other problems that way. So let me do, um, oh, here's one. Here's, here's, the, here's the problem. The first grouping, you only find sides. So let's look at this one. Here's one where you have to find the angle. So when we're finding the angle to the nearest degree, again, here's example two. Uh, we're going to find an angle. So we're going to use that second idea. But again, you got to label this thing right. You got to label it appropriately. So we got L, M, N. It doesn't matter where you label them, as long as once you label it, L is 8.7. M is 2.3. I know that they don't look that way and n is 6.6. .6. It doesn't really matter as long as you've labeled it and I'm supposed to find angle m to the nearest degree. So go back up here and look at what we did to find angle c and match that up with finding angle m. If you do that you will be fine on this problem. So to find angle m I can do the following. I can say angle M is equal to the inverse cosine of 2.3 squared minus 
8.7 squared minus 6.6 .6 squared divided by negative 2 times 6.6 .6 times 8.7. I use parentheses there because I was afraid my multiplication symbols would get get uh, mixed up with my uh, decimals in there. So again, I'm going to go over here, get a new screen. We go to functions because I need this one. I need this inverse cosine. And now I get a big thing here. So I am actually going to surround the numerator, the top, with parentheses. So you're going to want to surround this whole numerator with parentheses. And then you're going to want to surround this whole denominator with parentheses. So if I do that, I'm going to do 2.3 squared minus 8.7 squared minus 6.6 .6 squared. And then I'm going to close that parenthesis. That's the numerator divided by now I'm going to put all this on the denominator. I guess I don't need to, as long as I don't go out of the denominator, I won't have to uh, leave, the, I won't have to put parentheses around it. I did need to put parentheses around the numerator. Um, and then times 8.7. And there's my answer right there. That means angle M is equal to 7.09 seven, six, something like that. And that's what I put in here. Nearest degree, so seven, I guess is the nearest degree. If we go up here, type in seven, um, show the solution, and it's seven degrees. There we are. So they do all kinds of other steps here, but I've tried to simplify it a little bit more for you guys as you're doing these problems. Then there's a law of signs and then fi and, and more law of signs work which is what we did previously. So um, take a look back at the Law of Sines video if you're having trouble with figuring out how to do the Law of Sines again. I'm not going to bother to do another example of that one.